Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Moss and welcome back to our tutorial series on gRPC using the Go programming language. In the previous video, we wrote a very simple unary gRPC service method. And in this video, we're going to extend the functionality of our gRPC user management service. As you can imagine, a user management service might give you the ability to create new users, which is functionality that we already wrote, but it might also provide functions to read existing user data, update user data, and delete users. And what we'll do in this video is add a new gRPC service method called get users. When a client calls the get users service method, the gRPC server will return a list of active users. So any user that was created using the create new user service method should be returned in a list when calling the get users service method. By adding this service method to our user management service, we'll learn how to do the following. First, we'll learn how to write nested proto messages. And secondly, we'll learn how to persist data between calls to our gRPC service methods. If you haven't already, go ahead and grab a coffee and let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is modify the service definition in the user management proto file. Let's start by defining the service method signature. So I'm going to go down here and uh, I'll say RPC and then the name of the service method I'll call get users. And the input for the get users service method will be an empty message called get users params. And the reason that I'm using an empty message as the input for the get users service method is because in the initial implementation uh, of the get users service method, I simply want to return a list of all of the created users. But in future iterations, we may want to pass in parameters to the get users service method. For instance, I might want to pass in a regular expression to the function that returns only a subset of users that match that regular expression pattern. So in order to keep the API backwards compatible, I'm going to pass in an empty message as the input. And so this service method will return a list of users and we'll call that message a user list. So now that we've defined the service method signature, let's go ahead and define the input and output messages. The first message will be easy to define. If I scroll down uh, to the bottom here, I'll define a new message and we're going to call it get users params. And this will be an empty message. So we'll leave it just like that. And let's go ahead and define the last message. And this message we'll call user list. And inside of user list, we're going to use a keyword that we haven't uh, seen before and it's called repeated. So I'm gonna say repeated and then user, users equals one. The repeated keyword is something that we use in order to return a list of something inside of a proto message. So we can return a list of integers, strings, or in our case, users. So we're actually returning a list of the user message type using the repeated uh, keyword. After defining that last message, we can go ahead and recompile our protobuf files. So I'm going to rerun the protoc command that we used in the previous video. And to do that, I'm going to quickly save the file and then I'll uh, use up arrow to search my uh, shell history. And uh, I think that's the correct command. So I'm gonna go ahead and select enter. And it looks like it successfully recompiled the protobuf files uh, so now that our protobuf files have been recompiled, we can begin modifying our uh, user management server and user management client code to utilize the get users service method. So let's first modify the user management server code. So I'm going to go ahead and clear the terminal and navigate to uh, the user management server.go file. And the first change that we're going to make is in the user management server type, we're going to add a new attribute to this type. So under the unimplemented user management server attribute, uh, we'll define a new variable and we'll call it user underscore list. And it will be of type protobuf user list. So it will be a user list struct, which was uh, automatically 
generated from the compilation of our uh, proto definition. And if I hover over it, you can see that it is, it is an array of user, uh, user struct pointers. Or rather, the user list struct uh, contains an attribute called users, and users is an array of user pointers. So this user list variable will be the in-memory data structure that we use to store users that were created uh, when a client called the create new user uh, gRPC service method. So now that we've defined the user list attribute, uh, let's go ahead and write a new function. And this function is essentially going to be a constructor for the user management uh, server type. So I'm going to say func and then new user management server. And it will return a pointer to a user management server. And inside of this function, we'll simply return uh, the address to a user management server. And inside of the user management server uh, instantiation, we'll set the user list uh, attribute to a new um, protobuf user list. So now that we have the constructor function defined, uh, let's write a new function that will simplify the uh, execution of the main function. So right now in the main function, uh, we set up a new gRPC server, we register that user management server, and, uh, and then we uh, call serve. So let's move this code into its own function, and we'll call that function uh, run, and it will be a receiver function of the user management server type. So under the user management uh, server definition, let's write a new function, and it will receive uh, server, which is a pointer to a user management server. And we'll call this the run function. And the run function will return an error. Okay. And all we're going to do in this function is move the code that's in the main function into the run function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down to the main function. And I'll just copy all of this here. Okay. Let's cut it and then paste that into the run function. And what I'm going to do at the bottom of this function is simply return the result of the call to serve. Uh, so here I'll just say return, and then I'll delete uh, everything else. So now the run function and the constructor function simplify the code that we have to write in the main function. So if I scroll down uh, to the main function, we really only need uh, a couple lines of code in the main function. The first is we're going to uh, instantiate a new user management server. So I'm going to uh, call it user management server. And it will be a pointer to a user management server type. And then we'll call our constructor function new user management server. And then the second thing that we need to do is simply call the run function on the user management server that we just created. Uh, so here I'll check for an error and call uh, the run function. So if error equal user management server dot run and error is not equal to nil, we'll log fatal and we'll say failed to serve. And that's all we need in the main function. And now there's only two other things that we need to do here. Uh, the first is in the create new user function. So when the create new user function is called, we should append any new users to the uh, user management server user list. So the first thing that I'll do in the create new user function is take uh, the user definition that we have here, and we're going to define a new variable and we'll call it created user and leave it like that. And what we'll do is append the created user to the user management server uh, user list. So to do that, I'm going to invoke our server. Uh, so s.userList.users equals append 
uh, s.userList.users as source and then created user, okay? And finally, we'll return the created user. So there's only one last thing to do and that's to implement the get users function. So I'll define a new receiver function under uh, the create new user function and it will receive s which is a pointer to uh, user management server and we'll call it get users and get users will take as input a context and then it will also take uh, a, a pointer to a protobuf um, get user params message and it will return a pointer to uh, protobuf user list as well as an error and as you probably already guessed all we're going to do in this function is return s dot user list and nil and that wraps up all of the modifications that we need to make to the server code uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and open up the client code so we can uh, begin modifying uh, that and in the client code, we really only need to call the get users service method. And we'll do that after calling the uh, create new user uh, service method. So I'll scroll down here uh, below where we print the um, user details that are returned to us after calling the create new user uh, service method. And before calling the service method, we'll first initialize an empty message uh, as input to the call to get users. So we'll call it params equal uh, the address to a protobuf.get user params. And then immediately following that, we'll call the get user uh, get users service method. So uh, we'll define two uh, variables, uh, R for the response and then error uh, equals client dot get users. We'll pass in context and then our empty uh, params message. And then after calling get users, we will check for an error. So if error is not equal to nil, log fatal, and then uh, could not retrieve users. Otherwise, we'll simply print the user list that we received from the server uh, to the terminal. Uh, so I'll say log.print newline user list and newline. And then we'll do a formatted print statement. So print f r.get users newline and then we'll call r.getUsers. So this call to get users should return an array of users that are stored uh, within the user management server's uh, user list uh, struct. And we don't have to make any additional changes to the client code, so let's go ahead and run the program and see what happens. So in the terminal, I'll first run the user management uh, server so I'll say go run user management server. Okay, and once that's running, I will start a new terminal and we'll run the uh, client. Okay, so go run user management client, client. And I got a really weird error here. It says uh, RPC error code unavailable descriptor. Uh, so let's take a look at the output of the server. And it looks like the server program actually terminated with a uh, segmentation uh, fault, so that's not good. And looking at the stack trace, it's pointing to line 44 uh, in the user management server code. So let me navigate to line 44. On line 44, we're just appending uh, the created user to the user list of the server, of the user management server. But I think I, I might know where the issue is. Uh, it's where we copy and pasted the code in the main function 
into the run function. In the call to the register user management server, the second parameter here shouldn't be uh, the address to the user management server type. It should actually be the server uh, that, is, uh, that the run function receives. So I'm gonna replace uh, this parameter with server and I'll go ahead and save the file. And let's try and run the server again. I'll clear the terminal. Okay, so the server's running and now let's run the client program uh, and see if it works this time. And it looks like it's working now. You can see uh, in the output uh, here we're uh, calling the create new user function first for Bob and then for uh, Alice. And then uh, we call the get users uh, function and that returns the user list which includes uh, Bob and Alice. So obviously having all of our users stored in an in-memory data structure isn't a scalable solution and we would want a more robust solution. But implementing this solution showed us how we can persist in-memory data between gRPC service method calls and allow those service methods access uh, to that data. In future videos, we'll explore more scalable solutions, but I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please consider throwing a like on the video and subscribing to the channel for more videos like this. And as always, the code that we wrote today is available in a GitHub repository that I've linked in the video description below. Thanks for watching.